Are you interested in running for TV? Well, I'm Brianna with Script Reader Pro, and in this video, we're going to dispel many of the myths and confusions surrounding writing TV scripts. Let's get into it. As an aspiring screenwriter, you may have noticed that there's quite a bit of confusing information out there regarding writing for television. Should I write a TV spec script if I'm a feature writer? If I want to start writing for television, should I try writing a TV show that's already on air or an original? What about single or multi-camera? Network or cable? How should I format a TV script? What can I do to break into television writing once my script's done? As in the land of features, if you want to break in, you'll need a spec script. This is a script written speculatively that showcases your talents and can be used as a calling card. In TV, there are two main types of spec script. Spec episode for an existing TV show, spec pilot for an original TV show. Let's take a quick look at both of these in turn. The spec episode. In the world of TV script writing, a spec usually means a sample episode of an existing show. It's also known as a TV spec, sample episode, and spec episode. For the sake of clarity, we're going to use the latter. Writing a spec episode is the traditional way writers used to break into television writing, but it's less in vogue now than a few years ago. This entails writing an episode of an existing TV series that showcases your ability to write current characters that people love and know in a way that feels real and familiar, yet fresh. It means writing characters with preset voices and personalities in order to demonstrate that you're a powerful writer with imagination, but also one who can follow the rules. This means following the rules, formatting structure and overall voice of the show. Writing an episode of say, Modern Family would require you writing all the families as we know them now, their quirky character personalities, breaking the fourth wall, etc. And all within intertwining, compelling, and funny stories. How things used to be. A while back, this used to be the best way, by far, to break into writing for television. You'd write a spec episode of a series you loved, and then submit that work through your agent or manager for consideration for a staffing position. If you totally got the way Ross and Rachel bounced off each other, or had a terrific take on an episode of Law and & Order, and you were able to execute a sample script of those shows with confidence, then chances were pretty good that you would be happily considered for a staffing position on that show or a similar one. Executives and showrunners would hire writers who would effectively emulate the tone and voice of the show they were staffing, and a spec episode was the best way to measure that ability. But times have changed, and so too has a professional strategy for breaking into television writing. In Hollywood today, Spec episodes are much less popular than they used to be. Some showrunners now only read spec pilots for original shows. This is not to say, however, that writing a spec episode is a complete waste of your time. You're still building your writing chops and will also be able to use it as a sample of your writing ability that could get you noticed. Fellowship season, more on this later, is a prime example of an avenue you can pursue that looks exclusively for spec episodes from aspiring writers. But Let's bring things up to date with another strategy you can use to begin a career writing for television. The Spec Pilot. This is a TV script written on spec for an original show you've created from scratch and is also known as an original spec, sample pilot, or simply a pilot. Again, for clarity, we'll be sticking to the term spec pilot. It's easy to imagine that writing a TV show that's compelling and original is as simple as writing a feature screenplay, but shorter. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong on two accounts. Not only is writing a feature about as difficult as it gets, but writing a television pilot in some ways is even more difficult. Sure, the page count is slimmer, but the reality is a pilot functions as a seed for the series. It's jump starting. And in order to write a pilot that works as both a writing sample and a potentially sellable series, you have to consider the rest of the tree before you even plant the seed. Now, it's all about voice. Whether you intend to write a TV series for a network or cable, the most important element is that you bring your voice to the project. Your unique view on the world that stands out from the stack of spec TV scripts piled on the desk of any rep, producer, or executive. It's no secret that we're going through a second golden age of television. Bold, creative choices garner critical praise and admiration, not only from executives and producers, but also, ultimately, high ratings from audiences worldwide. In other words, Television that makes bold, creative choices is good for business. Shows like Master of None, Stranger Things, and Atlanta have inspired networks to pursue standout ideas and original voices. All of which means that showing you can emulate the voice of an existing show has become much less valuable than demonstrating that you have a unique point of view. And the ability to tell an original narrative in an exciting way. How to write for TV. 
choosing to write a spec episode or a spec pilot. Spec feature scripts are written with the intention of being sold and produced, or at least function as a calling card to showcase a writer's ability. TV specs, on the other hand, both spec episodes and spec pilots are generally used solely as calling cards. The ultimate aim is to get staffed on an existing show. Just as no one is going to actually film your spec episode of Game of Thrones, it's super unlikely that anyone is going to buy and produce your original spec pilot. Only a select few have been made in this way, such as Mad Men, Glee, and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And even then, the route to the small screen wasn't a traditional one, in the sense of being shopped around and bought. The exceptions to the rule. The Mad Men spec pilot was written by Matthew Weiner, an established TV writer who had all the right contacts and was able to sell it to AMC. Glee was written as a feature by an undiscovered writer, found its way into the hands of Nip Tuck creator Ryan Murphy. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was a short film, made by and starring a bunch of LA actors. The TV specs that do get bought tend to be by writers who have a track record. So don't fall into the trap many aspiring TV writers make of concentrating on writing a spec pilot with the sole aim of selling it and getting it produced. Never say never, of course, but the problem is that there is no traditional spec market in television that operates in the same way as in feature market. Keep in mind that execs and producers are not really looking for the next big TV spec idea from aspiring writers. They do everything in house. Should you write a spec episode or a TV pilot? The answer to this is that ideally you should have both. The odds of having an original pilot purchased and produced are astronomically high, even less than selling a feature spec. But having an original pilot is still important. An original pilot shows what you can do when it comes to creating fresh new worlds, marketable concepts, and original characters. Fresh voices are always sought after and always welcomed. As the land of features, your voice and your view on the world is what makes you stand out on paper. So we advise writing a spec episode and a spec original pilot to show the breadth of your talents and to give yourself the best possible chance of getting staffed on an existing show create a varied portfolio. As someone looking to start a career writing TV show scripts, we also recommend creating a portfolio that tonally complements itself. In other words, write an original spec pilot of a show that tonally and thematically explores the same areas as your spec episode of an existing show. For example, let's say you've written a dark spec pilot that really pushes the envelope when it comes to crime drama. In this case, you'd probably do well to spec an episode of say, Sneaky Pete which shows your ability to also handle more mainstream TV sensibilities. Let's now take a look at six steps you should take when learning how to write for TV. These are the fundamental questions that should get you started as you consider how to write a script for a TV show, whether that's a spec TV episode or pilot. How to write for TV step one. Decide where you'd feel most at home. Imagine your ideal TV writing gig. Are you staffed on a network channel like ABC or NBC or on cable? i.e. on a show airing on HBO or FX. This is a crucial distinction, as your answer will dictate the tone and style of spec TV scripts you'll be writing. Networks. If you think you'd feel more at home writing for a network, you'll be defined by a sense of, for lack of a better word, conventionality. These channels are the homes of workhouse series that rarely veer too far from a relatively rigid format. Think of shows like Grey's Anatomy or Modern Family. If you consider their structure by breaking down individual episodes into specific beats, you'll find that they follow the same arc in almost every episode. While it might sound like this would make these series easier to write, the opposite is most often true, as finding a series that will function on the 500th episode in a fashion similar to its first episode is a taxing process. Cable and streaming. If, on the other hand, you think you're more of a cable or specialty home type of writer, think streaming services like Netflix and Hulu, your work will have more scope for originality. This medium naturally invites a more exciting degree of novelty as it allows the writer to branch out from traditional structure for both comedy and hour-long drama. In this space, you can let your wildest creative impulses guide you in a more broad and expansive direction. Look at a series like Atlanta or True Detective or Insecure. These shows up in convention and focus more specifically on the characters' unique voices. They play around with audience expectation, giving us one-off episodes that follow secondary characters. They're protagonists in worlds that are often reflective more of their creator's worldview than any expectation of what a show should be like. A worldview which is often imposed on new writers by network and studio executives. On a more pragmatic level, 
Cable shows offer more flexibility in terms of profanity, violence, and on-screen sexuality. These series are often presented in a limited number of episodes, i.e. to tell an anthology story, as opposed to a franchise designed to run for decades. In other words, there are more creative liberties for you as a creator and, currently, there is also more opportunity in this space. Overall, if you want to write this type of show, your choice of content is not so restricted. Procedurals, including shows about hospitals, police work, and legal fields, tend to land on traditional TV. But if you want to go all out with zombies, sci-fi, or any other genre, you will find endless creative freedom behind the boundaries of network television. How to write for TV step two. Pick a couple of shows you love. Firstly, what TV shows do you absolutely love? And secondly, what genre are they? This may seem like a simple statement to make, but it's important that you focus on the genre and type of show that's going to keep you excited, rather than writing something just because it's current. Your enthusiasm for the tone and genre of script you're writing will come across on the page, in the story world, plot, characters, dialogue, and so on. Write a list. Start by making a list of your favorite shows and then decide which one you want to write as a spec episode or emulate in a spec pilot. However, rather than write a list that contains both drama and comedy, pick one or the other. As a newbie television writer, you're much better off positioning yourself within a certain genre instead of attempting to be a jack of all trades who can write anything. Deciding on a genre is about as elemental as it gets, but it will give your script its first embryonic shape. Do you want to write drama? If so, then your TV script should typically fall somewhere between 55 and 65 pages. If you want to write comedy TV show scripts, then they should be landing around the 25 page mark. But these are by no means hard and fast rules. Once you know where your natural TV writing habitat lies, network or cable, what your favorite shows are within that space, and whether you want to kick off with a spec episode or a spec pilot, you're ready to start some serious research. A quick note on writing TV spec episodes. Pick a show that's popular and currently on air. For example, even though Frasier may be your favorite show of all time, once a show is over, it becomes obsolete in terms of using it as a writing sample. How to write for television step three. Research your chosen show or shows to death. Attempting to learn how to write a TV script without actually studying your chosen show is a bit like trying to study to play rock guitar without learning any Jimi Hendrix licks. Make it your mission to know whatever show you want to write or emulate inside out. Do this by following these steps. Read TV scripts. A good starting place is to go to a screenplay download site, such as Simply Scripts or Script City, and download as many episodes of your favorite show as you can and get reading. Note, you want to go for the actual teleplays though, and not one of those ubiquitous transcripts. These just contain someone's transcript of the dialogue and nothing else. Reading the real TV scripts of the series you want to write or emulate is probably the best way to learn how to write for TV. Write outlines of TV shows. We're big believers in writing outlines of movies as you watch them and then breaking them down in order to master structure. And the same goes for writing a TV series. Simply sit down with your laptop and type out what happens on screen in one or two sentences. Then break down the resulting document into sequences and acts. Transcribe TV shows. I know a moment ago we told you not to bother with reading transcripts, but actually writing them yourself is another matter. You'll learn so much about how to write for TV. Whereas writing outlines is great for learning about structure, writing transcripts is great for dialogue and will really help you find the voice of your characters. Read books on how to become a TV writer. There are some great books out there on how to write for TV, such as Writing the TV Drama, How to Succeed as a Professional Writer in TV by Pamela Douglas. We also highly recommend writing the pilot by William Rapkin. How to write for TV step four, master TV script formatting. Now we know you can't wait to start creating that unique world or kick-ass episode of an existing show, but it's important to also be able to present your TV script professionally. If you're used to writing feature screenplays, then switching to TV scripts shouldn't be too much of a problem as the fundamentals are pretty much the same, especially when it comes to writing a single camera show for cable or streaming. TV script software. The first thing you want to do is purchase a screenwriting software if you don't already own one. This will make sure your script formatting is up to industry standard. Final Draft handily has the TV script formats for many of the most popular shows preloaded in its template database. There are also some free screenwriting software options out there, but if you want to take breaking into TV script writing seriously, we'd recommend spending a bit on some pro gear. 
Professional screenwriting software will take most of the formatting heavy lifting out of your hands, leaving you to concentrate on what counts, the story and characters. The biggest thing you'll have to watch out for when writing a TV script is its structure, as this will affect the formatting. TV format and structure. Broadly speaking, your TV script structure will fall into one of these three categories. One hour drama. This is a 60 minute show that may or may not contain commercial breaks. They can roughly be broken down into procedurals such as The Mentalist, i.e. self-contained stories every week, and serialized shows such as Homeland, in which the plotline develops from episode to episode. 30 minute single camera comedy. Single cams feel more like a feature film as they're shot in the same way, sometimes utilizing a handheld camera style. Examples include The Goldbergs and Curb Your Enthusiasm. 30 minute multi-camera comedy. Multi-camera comedies represent the traditional way of filming sitcoms. In a studio, sometimes in front of a live audience, sometimes with a laughter track. Frasier and Last Man Standing are both examples of this format. As we've mentioned, there's not a great deal of difference between writing features and TV writing. The main difference between the two, and also between writing an hour drama and 30 minute comedy, is how the stories are structured. So let's now take a brief look at the different structures of each of these three TV script formats. The following examples are all for networks as they include teasers, act breaks, and tags. Writing for cable generally means you leave this out and format the script in an exact way you would a feature. One hour drama. Here are the main elements of a one hour TV drama, all of which, unlike in features, are written directly on the page by the writer. Teaser, act one, act two, act three, act four, act five, sometimes. Some contain commercial breaks while others don't. If they do, then the next time you watch your favorite drama, Note where they land as these will give you your act breaks. Here's an example of one hour TV script formatting from the Breaking Bad pilot. Teaser, exterior, cow pasture, day. Deep blue sky overhead, fat scubby clouds. Below them, black and white cows graze the rolling hills. This could be one of those California, it's the cheese commercials. Except those commercials don't normally focus on cow shit. We do. Tilt down to a fat, round patty drying olive drab in the sun. Flies buzz, peaceful and quiet, until zoom. Wheels plow right through the shit with a splat. New angle, an RV. It's speeding smack dab through the pasture, no road in sight. A bit out of place, to say the least. It's an old 70s era Winnebago with chalky white paint and Bondo spots. A bumper sticker for the Good Sam Club is stuck to the back. Generally speaking, the teaser takes up the first two to five pages introducing the audience to the characters and story world, and hopefully hooks them into wanting to see more. The subsequent acts each gain in conflict, much like in a feature, and end on a big cliffhanger to hook the audience into watching the next act or episode. If you're writing for a network, each one prefers their acts at different lengths and to be broken down in different ways. So you will want to tailor your script according to their preferences. This is where you as a writer need to do your research. Here are some one hour TV scripts to read. Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Sneaky Pete. 30 minute single camera comedy. The way a 30 minute single camera show is formatted is pretty much the same as a feature or a one hour TV drama. While some single camera shows sometimes use more than one camera, the key element to bear in mind is that they have more of a cinematic feel to them. Here are the main elements of a 30 minute single camera show. Again, with headings written directly onto the page. Cold open, same thing as a teaser. Act one, act two, Act three, tag. And here's an example of a single camera TV script from Parks and Recreation. Act one, videotape, series of sweeping shots of famous landmarks. We see shots of famous political images, the Capitol building, floor of the Senate, a recent presidential inauguration, the White House, Mount Rushmore, etc. Leslie, VO. I love politics. I've always loved politics. The game, B-roll. Slow pan over some bookshelves. Nothing but political biographies. Leslie continued. Some people say that politics is show business for ugly people. I disagree. It's show business for real people. People whose talents aren't dancing and singing, but rather talking and talking. Interior, Leslie's office, day. Angle on, a framed copy of the Constitution. A portrait of Thomas Jefferson. The obvious difference here is that all of the conflict is condensed into just three acts, sometimes only two. They also contain a tag at the end of the script, which acts as a button to the whole show. That final joke for the audience to take away with them. 
Here are a few single camera TV scripts for you to read. Modern Family, New Girl, and Parks and Recreation. 30 minute multi-camera comedy. Multi-camera TV scripts are kind of an entity all to themselves when it comes to formatting. Unlike features, one hour drama scripts, and single camera sitcoms, multi-camera TV shows tend to have a more technical production formatting style, which can bloat an otherwise regular 22 page script into 52 or more. This is because they're shot fast, usually in front of a live studio audience, and so their formatting needs to be that much more specific. Here's an example of the formatting in a multi-camera sitcom script, Frasier. Interior, Frasier's living room. Later that night, night four. Frasier, Martin, Eddie, Daphne. We pan across the apartment to see Frasier and his new family watching TV. Martin is sitting in his barca lounger. Eddie, Frasier, and Daphne are sitting on the couch. Frasier, VO. You're mourning what you thought your life was going to be. Let it go. Things don't always happen how you plan. It's not necessarily bad. It doesn't mean things won't work out anyway. Eddie puts one paw on Frasier's leg. Frasier, continued, VO. Have you ever heard of Lupe Viles? Fade out. End of act two. The first thing you'll notice is that all action lines are written in all caps and much more underlying going on than in any other script formats. Also, all the dialogue is double spaced, which along with the description being in all caps helps beef up the page count. Here are some multi-camera TV scripts to read. The Big Bang Theory, Frasier, Friends. Now, some people advise against aspiring TV writers employing the multi-camera format in their spec episodes and just write them in the more familiar single camera style. This is because it's deemed too complicated and specialized to pull off correctly. However, we think that if you do your research, there's no reason why you shouldn't take the opportunity to show whoever reads your script that you've really taken the time to master the craft. In closing, remember that aside from the structure, different networks, cable, and streaming services also have their own formatting requirements. One may want scene headings underlined, while another may prefer they're not, and so on. The best advice we can give is find produced scripts in your chosen field and then study them until their format and structure become second nature. How to write for television step five, write a jaw-droppingly good script. Now that you've decided where you'd like to work and what genre and mastered the basics of formatting, you can start to get into the fun stuff, writing a killer TV script that will open doors for you. This is, of course, easier said than done, but this is where your talent and your perseverance as a writer comes into play. What will make your TV script unique? The most relevant question you can ask yourself if you're writing an original one hour spec pilot is, What's my personal connection to this material? In other words, why are you the only person who could tell this story? The more specific and honest an answer you can give to this question, the more value you'll bring to the material. The first step of breaking into the TV writing business using a spec pilot is writing one that communicates you, your worldview, and your unique story. Not only should this pilot sample be a reflection of your interest and vision, but it should also be loud and attention grabbing. This is your calling card. So make it something special and you will be presenting yourself as a strong addition to any writing staff. Create a TV show Bible. A way to really stand out amongst the crowd of TV writing aspirants is to consider building out a show Bible, a document that touches on the broad goals of your series. Address character, setup, what each individual episode feels like, and how you view the series growing beyond a single season. Really dig into what your primary story arcs are and how they integrate into the B and C stories. Basically, what are the beats that define your series? What are the most significant elements that make your series unique? Is your series a procedural, where every episode of each season follows the same pattern? Or is it an anthology like American Horror Story, which reboots its story each season? In other words, you've written a great pilot, but you're also considering the future of your concept. Admittedly, this is a challenging prospect, but one that will serve you well in the long term. Not only will you have a greater understanding of what your series is and how to pitch it, you'll also be in a stronger position to sell your work if you ever find yourself in the position of doing so down the line. How to write for TV step six, research how to break into the industry. Once you've completed the hard work of actually writing your brilliant new TV script, you're undoubtedly eager to share your work with the most powerful hands in Hollywood. And this is where the real work begins. As with writing features, your best bet is to find a manager or producer who accepts submissions or queries and do whatever you need to do to get your work in front of them. Gaining representation. The general thing you want to do though is to fully research the lay of the land and where your TV spec may find a home. 
Work out who are the people you want to get your work in front of. People who fit your brand, genre, sensibilities, and target demographic. For example, there's no point in submitting your dark and edgy crime thriller to Nickelodeon. In short, even if you have a terrific manager already or land one in your pursuit of staffing success, the truth is you truly do need a television agent to break into the industry. Television agents have a special relationship with staffing executives and producers, and without making it past this threshold, you have very little chance of even booking a general meeting with the television executives. There are, however, a few other viable routes which you can use which circumvent the traditional need for representation in order to staff, such as TV writing contests, fellowships, and labs. Let's take a look at each in turn. TV script writing contests. There are a number of television writing competitions that promise to boost your career in impossible ways. But we can assure you, there's no get successful quick scheme that actually works. Instead, do some due diligence and seek out the reputable contests that are guaranteed to help advance your career. Do your research on the best screenwriting contests out there, most of which have dedicated TV writing categories. TV writing fellowships and labs. Several networks run television writing fellowships and labs for talented, aspiring writers and are a fantastic way of breaking into the industry if you're lucky enough to get picked. They often offer the opportunity to get paired up and mentored by seasoned TV writers, but you'll have to submit a TV spec episode and the competition is tough. Disney, Nickelodeon, Universal, Sundance Episodic Storytelling Lab, Warner Brothers, and CBS. These are all trustworthy incubators for television talent that rely on just your writing, as opposed to the staffing process that involves several rounds of meetings and having to impress the whole network worth of people. Work your way up the ladder. Finally, another tried and trusted way to break into writing for television is to get a job as a writing assistant, or at least in the mailroom at a production company or agency. Age plays a factor here though, as most of the positions are taken by graduates and people in their 20s. In fact, when learning how to write for TV, it's also important to consider other factors within and outside of your control. Age. It is important to note that age is definitely something that dictates your options in TV land. The younger you are, the more attractive you are to a showrunner because your voice and style are expected to be young and current. It is how it is. So keep that in mind if you are going to turn your life upside down to try and get staffed on a show. Location. If you're writing features, you can be practically anywhere in the world when it comes to breaking in. Of course, though, we recommend being in Los Angeles. When it comes to writing for television, you really do need to live where they make TV. This is because you won't be able to get staffed on a show if you can't walk in the next day and start work. In this respect, it's much more like a regular day job, and you wouldn't expect to get a job on Wall Street while living in Tacoma. How to write for TV, conclusion. In the end, we recommend attempting to break into Hollywood armed with a portfolio that contains both feature screenplays and TV scripts. The two play off of each other, which means you may get an assignment in one format which leads to greater things in the other. Keep your options open and be flexible, because having success in either medium will naturally help the other. Like with writing features, writing for television all comes down to story and character. So remember to always be original and fresh, even if you are writing a spec of a pre-existing show. Alrighty, that about wraps up this video. We hope this guide has helped dispel some of the confusion surrounding how to write for TV and wish you the best of luck on your journey. If you have any questions at all, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And while you're down there, why don't you let us know how do you plan on breaking into the industry? If you're enjoying this content, please be sure to check out the rest of the videos on this channel and consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to receive an alert anytime we upload. And finally, if you're in the market for affordable feedback on your script from a professional screenwriter, be sure to check out the link in our description bar below. Alrighty guys, I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye!